What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Adidas Nemesis Messi 17 Plus 360 Agility, the new laceless Messi variant of the current Nemesis lineup. Essentially what the Nemesis Messi line is all about is it's based off the standard Nemesis boot, but it features different elements that are more tailored towards Messi's liking supposedly. So it has a little bit of a different upper and it features a different sole plate and stud pattern, which of course we'll cover in detail in today's video. What's funny about this particular signature model, signature model, is that Messi himself will never actually wear, or at least is very unlikely to wear this particular version of the shoe, which is of course laceless. This is the top end version in the new lineup with a $320 retail price and I'm sure it's pretty well known at this point that the version of the Nemesis be it the regular launch color or this new messy variation that he's actually wearing does actually have a lacing system which is of course more like the Nemesis 17.1 or in this case Nemesis Messi 17.1 but if you look even closer at the boots that Messi is actually wearing it's not even a one piece construction with a lacing system. It's something entirely custom. So he's not exactly wearing the versions of his own signature line that you can buy in the store. Take that for what it is. But if you're buying this shoe with the expectation that this is the exact shoe that Messi himself wears, unfortunately, that is not the case. Anyways, we're gonna go over all the details of the new Nemesis Messi 17 Plus 360 Agility in this video. So if you wanna learn more about them, stick around. If you're interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $320 retail price. Being that it is a top end model from Adidas, they do include this particular string bag along with the shoes inside the box. So now that we have a messy variation of the most expensive boot on the market, the Nemesis 17 Plus, what's so special about them? What makes them different? Why should you pick this over the standard variation? There are two main differences, one being the front section and rear section of the upper, and the second being the sole plate and stud pattern. The forefoot and toe box area is made up of Agility Knit 1.0 instead of Agility Knit 2.0, like you'll find on the standard variation of the high-end Nemesis boots. This is taken originally from the Messi 16 Plus Pure Agility and Messi 16.1, which is of course the previous generation of Messi signature models that this boot replaces. It feels pretty much the same as those models as well. It's a mesh based synthetic material and in comparison to the Agility Knit 2.0 you'll find on the standard Nemesis, it's just thicker, it's more padded. It doesn't necessarily offer the best feel on the ball in my opinion. I've never been a big fan of this particular material and if you're asking me a preference, I do prefer the feel of the Agility Knit 2.0 for sure without a doubt. And as far as how much this actually means to you, because obviously they're saying that this is the version of the upper that Messi himself truly prefers, he doesn't actually wear this particular shoe. So how much of his actual opinion is brought into the final product, it's really, really difficult to say. And as far as which version of the agility that Messi has on his actual shoes, that's also something that's really, really difficult to judge simply based on pictures. This is okay, but I prefer what they have on the regular Nemesis. You'll also find Agility Knit 1.0 in the heel area of the shoe, but considering this is backed by a hard internal plastic heel counter, the material that's on top of that honestly doesn't matter. You just feel the hard plastic heel counter. The second major difference in comparison to the standard Nemesis is of course the sole plate and stud pattern, which features the sprint frame and stud pattern taken again from the previous generation of Messi boots, the 16 Plus Pure Agility and Messi 16.1. So instead of the usual torsion frame, you get the sprint frame construction, which quite honestly is a very similar type of plastic. It's a little bit thinner on this model, which does make the sole plate feel more flexible overall. But for the most part, it's not something that you're really gonna notice when the shoes are on your feet. It's a decent sole plate and it feels high end. That's about all you can ask for. The stud pattern features the same layout, not only that you'll find on the regular Nemesis, but across the entire Adidas brand, four studs in the heel, three studs on either side of the forefoot and one support stud in the middle. But of course, instead of being the semi-circles that you'll find on the Nemesis, you have some rounded studs at the tip as well as at the very back. And then you have triangular studs within all of the rest of the stud pattern. In terms of how different it feels when it comes to traction, these are slightly smaller studs, so they penetrate the ground a little bit more easily. You could make the argument that this feels a touch more aggressive, but the difference is extremely minimal. 
And in all honesty, I can't say that I have much of a preference between this version and the regular Nemesis variation. It is FGAG though, so if you do play on natural grass and artificial grass playing surfaces and you only wanna buy one pair of shoes, this stud pattern and pretty much any stud pattern within the current Adidas brand will do that for you, which is definitely nice to have. The only other minor difference in comparison to the regular variation versus the Messi model is the weight of the shoe. In a size 9 US, the Messi version weighs in at seven ounces exactly, which is about 0.4 ounces lighter than the standard Nemesis 17 plus. Is that a significant weight difference? Not really. I think the reasoning for this version being a little bit lighter is the slightly thinner sole plate like I talked about earlier. But for the most part, I don't think that should be a deciding factor. Whether you go for the regular version or the messy version, they're gonna have a nice lightweight feel on feet. The rest of the boot is identical to the regular Nemesis 17 plus. Torsion tapes are used on the messy variation of the Nemesis, just like you'll find on the standard model. Basically, they're tapes that run in the shape of a V across the middle of the forefoot, as well as across the heel and midfoot area. So you can see it runs from here, across the back of the heel, and then back down to the midfoot, where they basically all connect in the middle. You can see it through the translucent sole plate, which is a really interesting concept. They're there for the sake of structural integrity of the upper, where it wraps your foot quite nicely. They're relatively soft. They don't offer any kind of pressure points on your foot, which is really, really important. And of course, you can see they've been rebranded to say messy, as opposed to the usual nemesis. Of course, being the 17 plus variation, the shoe is laceless. And to create the laceless system, the midfoot area is filled in with 360 agility bandages. You can see the branding right there. And essentially it is as described, it's an elasticated bandage that wraps across the top of your foot. You can see they kind of crisscross a little bit through the midfoot. There's not a lot of overlap here. You'll find that this particular band does overlap underneath to about here. But other than that, it's just a single layer of these bandages across the top of your foot. And the only parts that's elasticated is the part that isn't covered by any kind of polyurethane top layer like you'll find through the toe as well as on the torsion tapes. The reason why the top of the shoe is elasticated is so you can get them on and off. And once you have them on, the idea is that the shoe kind of compresses back around your foot, which it does. It actually fits really nicely. But what I did find as a complication with this particular boot and a lot of laceless boots that I've tried is that because this is elasticated, it doesn't take a lot of force to actually stretch it. So when you are at top speed making a quick change of direction, I do find that the elasticated center part does stretch a little bit, so you do temporarily lose some responsiveness, some stability, some lockdown, and it can lead to complications with discomfort as well. The laceless shoes, quite honestly, are not for everybody. And I think from an objective performance standpoint, if you're looking for the most responsive feel from a Nemesis boot, the 17.1 variations with a lacing system will offer a better fit, better lockdown, and just a more solid level of responsiveness, just because the center part of the shoe isn't gonna be opening up, opening up on you upon more intense movements. On the underside of this top agility bandage, you'll find that it does extend a little bit higher. So in order to keep that in place, they added these little silicone dots on the underside to grip your socks so it's not moving around on you. Non-stop grip dots, which is Adidas's wet control element, also make an appearance on a messy boot for the first time ever. We didn't have it on the 15 or 16 generations, and pretty much they span the entire upper aside from on the Adidas stripes, as well as across the top of the foot where the agility bandages are completely exposed. Do they actually make a difference in terms of grip on the ball in wet weather playing conditions? I would argue no, but a lot of people really like the wet control elements, so just know it is included on this particular shoe. The boot is low cut, or at least I would consider this to be low cut. A lot of people get concerned about this sharp angle on the sides of the ankle, but quite honestly, it's not something that you notice at all when you're playing. Like I mentioned earlier, this top piece extends slightly up the front of your ankle, not super noticeable either, but the back also extends a little bit higher than normal, and I did find when wearing either the 17 plus or the 17.1, that there was a little bit of a chafing issue because of this little bit of an extension piece with the stitching right there. It's not something that is a major issue, but I did get some discomfort and minor blistering for the first couple of wears. After breaking though, it wasn't an issue at all. Just be aware of that when you're breaking them in. The inside of the heel area is nicely padded and lined in a super soft, very smooth material. It's kind of like a synthetic suede, but it also kind of reminds me of a Clarino. Really nice against your heel, 
no major issues with slippage, but because of the laceless system, you will find that heel slippage can occur upon more intense movements. The insole is fully removable. It features a really soft synthetic suede lining on top. There's perforations through the forefoot and heel area as well. And it's basically just a single layer of this black foam, pretty much the standard Adidas insole you'll find in all of their top end boots. Aesthetically, the shoe remains very similar to the regular Nemesis model. You still have the same agility bandage design with the three stripes running throughout the entire shoe. It's more subtle on this colorway because it's black on dark gray, not black and white stripes like we saw on the launch color. You maintain the three Adidas stripes on the lateral side of the shoe. And of course, they weren't shy with the messy branding this time around with it being in neon yellow across the torsion tapes with the messy logo there there as well as on the back of the heel where you do have the standard nemesis branding as well uh, let me know what you guys think though do you like the messy version of the shoe better than the standard variation from an aesthetic standpoint i'll leave a little pop-up poll on screen vote yes or no i'd be really curious to hear your opinions because honestly i quite like the look of the shoe but i think it has more to do with the colorway than the actual design differences with the Messi logo. I think the Nemesis branding actually looks pretty cool. Uh, anyways, you do have this pearlescent finish on the sole plate as well, which gives it this interesting rainbow effect. It is a wearable finish though. It does come with a warning sticker letting you know that it will wear off over time. But in my experience with a lot of these wearable finish sole plates from Adidas, it doesn't actually wear off all that quickly. And for the most part, it's not really gonna change the look of the shoe. For being laceless boots, they're actually not too bad to put on. The only thing you'll find is that the silicone on the underside of that top agility band will catch on your socks as you're trying to slide them on. So basically I like to grab the front and back of the shoe, pull up on this elasticated part, and then basically just push your foot inside, adjust it around the edges because it will kind of fold in on you. And that's pretty much it. You've got them on and you're good to go. On feet, these boots actually feel really good. I wouldn't say there's much of a difference in terms of overall fit and feel when compared to the standard Nemesis 17 Plus. So if that's something you were wondering, like I said, there isn't really much of a difference there in terms of the shape and just general width of the shoe. But what's kind of deceptive about this particular model is that when you put them on, they actually do feel quite impressive in terms of how they wrap your foot. It's got a nice close fit. There's not a lot of extra space on the inside of the shoe at all, as long as you get the right size. But like I talked about earlier, because this top part is elasticated and because it does stretch fairly easily, when you start making those quick cuts and changes of direction, I really did find that there was more stretch and more sloppiness to the upper when making those more intense moves, which just made the shoe less stable, less responsive, and an issue that you quite simply would not have with the laced 17.1 variation. So they're definitely not for everybody, but they are okay as a top end performance product, I would say. But again, they're $320. They're the most expensive boots you can buy right now, but I don't think they're the best performer when you're talking about general stability and responsiveness. As far as width is concerned, they've got a nice snug fit. I wouldn't say that they're overly tight. So as long as you don't have super, super wide feet, you shouldn't have too many issues in regards to getting the right fit. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here and the fit and length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, just like the regular Nemesis boots, these run true to size. That's what I'd recommend in order to get the best possible fit. As a whole, the messy Nemesis 17 Plus is essentially just a minor variation to the regular Nemesis. If you're asking me what my preference is, I do prefer the standard variation solely based on the Agility Knit 2.0 versus the Agility Knit 1.0 you're gonna find on this shoe. It's thinner, I feel like it's softer, it's more flexible, I just prefer the touch that it has on offer. As a whole, the product itself, be it this version of the shoe or the regular Nemesis 17 Plus, I think they're just okay. I think if you're after just pure performance and bang for your buck value, spending $225 on the regular Nemesis 17.1 or the Nemesis Messi 17.1 is the far better value, $95 less than the laceless version that I'm holding right here. The retails for 320. This is the most expensive top end boot on the market right now. And again, while it gets the job done, I would give it an okay in terms of overall performance characteristics. I know people are fascinated with the laceless system and it does actually work, but is it the best when it comes to outright performance? 
No, I think the Laced 17.1 variation is better. And if you're just after pure performance, that is the version I would recommend. Again, if you're interested in the pair for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $320 retail price. If you enjoyed the video, as always, support it with a like. That helps me out tremendously. If you have any questions regarding this particular shoe, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. All my social media information is linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.